What is up, everybody? Welcome to episode five of the Groove Sessions podcast. Uh, me, Jack, and... And me, Roman. Oh, what's up, boy? How's it going? You all right? Yeah, you're here. You're back. You're alive. You're alive. You're alive. complain. Ah, good, man. Uh, Life's so t- good. Yeah. Well, you know, it's as good as it can be at the moment, you know what I mean? Um, how, so, yeah, so today we're going to talk about um, kind of a following on from... Really, kind of say, I'd say more episode. Should you say episode three? I think I would say kind of following yeah, on and about after absolutely. kind of the kind of the studies and the you know kind of the, the the section of your career as you go on after you study the music itself. Exactly. Yeah, we've kind of we've we've done an intro about the the beginnings of a musician. Then we've we've covered the studies, as Jack says, yeah, yeah. and and now we're looking to to cover that next section yeah like get, getting that first little fucking step in the door you know yeah I mean? definitely definitely i think it's like i apologize about my language yeah so. <laughs> i definitely think uh yeah it's worth kind of i suppose sharing our experiences roughly of how we got on after um, yeah. i don't know if you want to start maybe you could start and like let everyone kind of inform them what's uh you got up no to. problem no problem yeah I've, so fortunately i've got like quite a good amount of experience in this area and um i'm just going to try and like outline it in quite a a transparent way i Mm. suppose and um i'm going to like deploy a couple of things for you to think about you know things for you if if you're listening and you're looking to get the first job or the first audition just a few things for you to consider um so number one i would say like think about where the action is in terms of the work so it normally is going on in the major cities so london you know manchester glasgow yeah yeah yeah. um if you're in america la new york chicago nashville Mm. so yeah major cities so if you're not willing to live in a major city be willing to commute to a major city because chances are it's going to be happening there so got some european countries as well there are some european countries oh of course yeah. yeah Big, yeah. big, there's a big, big, big music scene on the, uh, I think the, the French and the German scene. Like, there's oh, absolutely. Berlin's huge. Uh, they are yeah. massive, massive. I know Paris and Lyon, they're big, <clears throat> big places for some music, you know, so that's good. Yeah, yeah, because yeah. Fr- France aren't, like, dominant in music, but they actually are when you look into it. Yeah, they're not on actually, the surface. Nah, but you don't actually realise how many countries there are that have a dominant, their own dominant music uh outside of popular culture yeah yeah exactly like you know we're so used to hearing like i suppose maybe like mainstream uk plus mainstream you know america, america Australia, and then you kind yeah. of yeah but then you kind of don't really get that inside kind of gossip right. and like what's going on in the european you know you know because obviously some of our audience might be from europe and you know they obviously we might not know some of their music, which is actually quite relevant to say that yeah. briefly. Uh, no, like, absolutely. I think and I apologize to be honest. I apologize <laughs> for not. No, I apologize for not mentioning it. But I, I don't really know about that area. Which yeah, is yeah. But that's why I thought. It. Yeah, but that's why I thought I'd reference it because, like, obviously, with having yeah. everybody all over the place listen, I thought that was like an area that actually we should look into maybe doing an episode on. Oh, I'd like to about, look. Yeah, we should. Like, yeah, yeah, and definitely. we should ourselves. We should sort of look at like moving into it and learning yeah. about but it. I, I, like to... I interrupted you, so I, I should okay. I should let you carry on. I should let you carry on going. Go on. No worries. So yeah, that's where the action is. Number two, who holds the key? This is the question. Who holds the key? So there's there's probably half a dozen people in my mind or in my experience. Um, you so you've got music producers. Mm-hmm. managers of artists mm-hmm. yeah. any kind of manager in the industry is going to yeah. be holding some sort of key to a door that you want to get through um, uh, the other one is other musicians and hmm. as a bass player that doesn't just mean drummers and guitarists that means other bass players because if a bass yeah. player is too busy to take on this job mm. here you go oh you know what roman's good i'll get roman in on that to cover Defo. me so Defo. look at um and it comes back to that word again, and we bang on about it. It's networking. It's who you know. Mm. And once you start to navigate um, these people, you're you're going to start to win. But you need to build up a rapport with these guys, basically. Oh, oh mate, big time, big time. That's like when we were speaking to, like, Nick in episode four. Do you know what I mean? We were talking to exactly. him. And it's like a guy like that with his, like, you know, his broad range of experience now that he's built himself. It's like, you know, 
he's he's probably had that fair amount of jobs where he's gone oh i can't do that but i know the perfect person to do this do you know what i mean so it's like it's he's built a community in it in his own yeah other bass players like you said but obviously other musicians as a whole which is key anyone that's listening you really really i one thing i wish i'd done going on your point about kind of having a connection with people one thing i wish i had done is made more connections with other musicians yep. like i have a, I, I have my i have my like people that i know i could go to i have people that i, I know are wicked at what they do and like and i would put I recommend them highly but i think yep. i'd wish i'd branched it a bit more you know made more of an effort to bring more people into it rather than just like the network yeah boss. exactly so you knew yeah. that there was like as a as a thing i like to say in this industry there's other doors somewhere along the row that you need to go through but you just don't know because well for me now they're <clears> locked <throat> those doors are locked because i don't have someone on that other side opening it for me that i know i could go to and go hey, hey what's yeah. up you know what i mean i they're all yeah. shut for me do you know what i mean but there are a lot of them that i've opened do you know what i mean but yeah. they will open eventually and i'm not saying they're not that's not me saying they're not i think they will open eventually once i build more and more of a community and a connection with other people who know other people and those will open for me eventually you know what i mean so true so yeah. true and, and it's the same and, with and you. As, it's the same with me I, yeah. i've experienced the same thing but as as you do more work your reputation gets better and then people want to work with you yeah, people yeah. want to recommend you yeah. they're not and this is important like they're not going to recommend you like for a laugh you've got to be <laughs> like they, they've got to, no they, they've got to know that you this guy's really really deliver. funny this guy's really funny yeah actually <laughs> he's not good at bass but he's really funny really honestly it, he, he can't play a note but he's really funny so you should yeah. get I me mean, get him on that session do you know what i mean because it'd be such a vital role for you that is what that is literally <laughs> that's not not what you should be good at is being funny or anything like that like you can be funny i'm not saying don't be but you got to be like I, I you know if you're signing up for something you've got to know that you can put 110 and more into that knowing you can do it you know what i mean that's a key vital yeah. piece of information you can't just take everything do you know what i mean yeah because it might be something you might be throwing yourself into the deep end if you've not done had much experience yeah. and it's key yeah, to have true. the experience before you start taking on a lot you know i always found myself to, to kind of <clears throat> you know starting like one or two projects if that makes sense you know whether it be a band whether it be working with a solo act you know really putting yourself out there but but keeping it to the bare minimum work-wise so that you yeah. get a feel for what the workload will entitle you know yeah. and the more the more you get into it you'll obviously start getting more people maybe come and contact you and so on and that's good but you don't want to accept that more and more and more work if you can't manage what you're already doing if that makes sense yeah. you know yeah, you have no, to that's, kind that's of very true. have a fair control over everything that you you set out you know that's just like me i'm very like i'm fortunate enough to be a part of a lot of projects you know obviously this being one of them and a lot of others and, and same for roman being a lot of part of a lot of uh, like other um sort of projects and bands and solo acts you know and and one thing i should point out is roman's a really really <clears throat> really, really really good writer and composer of his own music like he was sending me some of his stuff the other day it's really Thank really you. really really good like it's Thank like you. appreciate you know that. it's definitely you know he knows i want to collab on some stuff with him he knows that already but i'm um, you, you know it's definitely it's definitely not only do i have someone that's really good at bass and i would highly recommend to use but knowing there's other areas he excels in is really good to know you know and same like you know business mind as well is very very you know and that's the good thing about him is because he's had so much experience like talking about roman here uh, <laughs> in case you just thought i was talking about someone random Thanks, uh, man. I'm yeah, that's, this. that's right Keep going. Um, talking about roman um yeah it's like i think you've probably been doing it a fair little bit longer than me but I would say that because you've done had that little bit more time in the industry, you <clears> built up more of a, uh, a sort of like an understanding for all the different sections and areas of the industry. So you kind of, I feel like I have learned yeah, a lot from I you. I see what you I see where you're coming from, Jack. Yeah, a I lot of what I've, a lot of what I've learned, I've learned from 
business mind wise and, and, and like planning and strategic and you know with every all the projects are doing putting time and effort into uh, some of it like has come from roman knowing listening to what he's got to say on different things you know and yeah, you know, I'm, I appreciate I that. might have had the same effects on him in certain areas but it's like Absolutely. you know definitely you know the reason we start one of the reasons we started the group sessions is because we have a lot of things in common we have a similar mindset but the thing about it is like you know it we've played with each other for quite a while so it's kind of good to kind of talk tell you guys that roman you know not only just knowing for being the bass player of this crew sessions the show you know what i mean like you know he does a lot on the outside you know and, and i do too but he's man he demanded the manageable side of it he's been able to kind of like you know not put his foot, out into yeah it, yeah not put your foot too deep into the kind of like I, this is too much like i'm doing so much that i can't control you know, I suppose you might lose lose you, lose yourself a little bit and your creativeness. You know what I mean? If you put yourself into too much work, you know. Absolutely. No, but Jack's not... right. The more, sorry, Jack. The, no, the more right. the more you do, the more you kind of find yourself and know what you enjoy, what you don't yeah. enjoy, and mm. and you kind of like. For me, when I do, if I branch out and like I'm starting to branch out into songwriting the last few years, but that wasn't that wasn't important to me like five years ago. Yeah, it's yeah, come yeah, along. Yeah. I've got to a stage now where I'm like, I would like to try that. So mm, yeah, yeah, it's time. It's just being persistent. Yeah, yeah, I mean. yeah, 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 definitely. I think it's uh, a, a key part <clears throat> of your progression after you come out of somewhere like we were talking about in episode three, coming out of your studies, coming out of a, a uni environment where it's like, you know, you get to play all the time. You get to kind of like, you know, and you think, you oh, know, I'm going to step out of there and I'm going to go straight, straight into like kind of, loads of work i'm gonna give myself loads of like you know sessions and and study you know and you might be lucky you might be one of those lucky people that gets a lot, a lot of opportunities straight out the straight out the like do front door of you walking out but yeah. some people they then you know you don't get it straight away but i think that's a good thing that you don't get them straight away because the more you settle yourself into building up that portfolio the more you learn things along the way, if you get thrown in that deep end too quickly, you will have things thrown, like put your way that you won't have an understanding of because you haven't had the previous experience of learning that from other people who have done that procedure. You know what I mean? So it's just one yeah. thing for you guys listening and I'm sure Roman understands, but running you know, before you. Yeah. Walk on yeah, exactly. Yeah. Don't go running yeah. towards, Oh, I'm going to get loads of session work. I'm going to, I'm going to do loads of gigs. I'm going to do like a, that's great, but you really kind of have to have that really kind of fundamental information on your kind of mind and, and, and kind of, I suppose, with you on the journey that you build, because you'll learn more, but at the same time, you'll, you'll be able to take what your knowledge that you've built to the work that you progress with further up, you know, the line, down the line, as you should say, you know what I mean? Yeah, so, absolutely. Yeah. It's just so, a little bit of information. I like, to, <laughs> oh, I like that. I like that a lot. Something I'd just like to jump on just sort of from that. Yeah. yeah, um, yeah, yeah. And it, it's kind of, it's how I see it at least. It's only an opinion, but there's kind of, for me, there's two sessions or two ways to look at sessions. You've got auditioning for a session for a project that's established that mm -hmm. If you get it, you're going to be paid. You're going mm. to go out on tour or studio work. It's yeah, you know, great. Basically, that's mm. the the best kind of session in my mind. But there's also sessions that are potential sessions that mm. could become sessions where people are yeah. they're un they're unsigned, and you think I'm going to offer my service services to them for free, play with them, mm. and see how that how that kind of grows, and then okay. that might end up becoming a professional session. Mm. There's two. It, it's it's how you kind of want to navigate it like with auditions i i would go to every audition you can literally oh big time ne never never turn down an audition nah, but definitely. If, if you're looking to do the like approach projects kind of mm. um sort of what what would you call it it's kind of a i don't know it's uh -huh. a, that 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 game plan of approaching loads of um existing projects in the hope that it will turn yeah, into yeah, a yeah, session. Yeah, 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 I got you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, be like Jack says, be mindful. Like you need to be able to deliver on them. So don't, mm. don't go. You could easily go and get on it's, twenty and yeah. be giving like 
not be giving each one a hundred percent. Well, that's it. You, you need to be self-aware and just know yeah. where you're coming from. I think but in yeah. terms of auditions, don't um, don't shy away from auditions because you won't ninety percent of them you won't get. So, pretty much. And I know, and I know that from experience. I know that from experience. Like I've been, I've been fortunate enough to be given some quite cool auditions for like you know not big people but like up and coming acts artists. Um, yeah. I don't know if you've heard of an artist and uh, you viewers and listeners, you might've heard of this artist. If you haven't, Steffo, go check, go check her out because I think she's really, really good. And uh, yeah, she's done quite a lot since uh, I knew about her. Um, but her name is Arlo Parks. I'm not yeah. too sure if you maybe heard her name. Um, she's know, new. She, know, yeah, she's, um, I was fortunate enough to be offered an audition to, to, drum for her in her early stages of her uh, like sort of kind of career I should say in progression um and um yeah it was you know I went there with the mindset of like you know I'm gonna do my 110 percent I'm gonna put it all in you know I'm gonna show them that I'm a genuine person and that I'm not here you know for the shits and giggles excuse my French but you know what I mean like you want to put a good kind of like in the terms of when you go to an audition they're not always playing you're not always playing auditions no. they're not no, trust not me don't think that an audition is always playing it's never this audition i went to farlow parks i actually had to send in a video of me playing i didn't play in person i actually sent one in so i had to send one in and then i had to go with for an interview slash meeting with her label to talk about being her drummer and i'm not gonna lie to you i turned up thinking you know what i've been recommended for this i'm probably the only guy gonna be here like you know i'm gonna like and this was my younger self and i'm, I'm a bit more older i'm a bit older than now when that happened from that when that happened but just to show you kind of how that works is like i walked into there with the same thing i've literally just spoken about of like i've been recommended for this so like you know and they've asked me to come uh, i'm like i don't think there's going to be anywhere one else there like they, it's it i'm it i'm it i've got it you think you've got i've it got, it, I've got it i've got it i've got it in the back yeah. like i've done it you know what i mean i sent it in they, the reason they asked me to come in for an interview is because they liked what my I sent them. They, you know, and I had that mindset. On. I had that like, I got it. I got it in the bag. I saw it. Yeah. But when I turned up, there's about seven other drummers waiting to get interviewed. So I've gone. Yeah. This yeah. is where my mind, and having previously gigged, had kind of gone from, ah, oh, right. Now my mind immediately gone from, ah, oh, I got it, to there's a possibility that I'm walking out of here, got it. And there's a possibility I'm walking out of here, not got it. Yeah. So that mood that I had of, I got it, I got it, went straight down to the, like, it, I just buried it, buried it in the ground, just threw it away. Do you know what I mean? Because I sat there, I gave my 110% in that interview and showed them that's that, uh, who I am and what I'm about. And I left. And, yeah. you know, usually you might give it a leeway of around a week to two weeks here back from from a label usually or an artist if they're interested. I, I think it was like a seven days later, maybe a week later, uh, I heard back from the label and they turned around to me and they said, oh, look, you're kind of not what we're looking for right now. And yeah, you right. know what? I said, fine. I said, because I might have put myself in the deep end because I didn't, ex I didn't, I had a little bit of experience, but I didn't have enough, you know? And I think what they were looking for is a bit of experience, you know? Because yeah. they probably knew what it entitled as she was going to progress. Because she was at that point in time, she's already been looked at by some big, big labels and big people. And yeah. she was on, and she was starting to get onto the festival circuit. And I, I'm, I, I, I big kid thing, you not. Yeah. yeah, I kid you not, literally like rounding this up, but I kid you not, I literally got that that I told that I wasn't going to be part of it and I'm telling you now literally a month later I think I'm sitting there in my living room watching TV I think it Glastonbury was on at the time like the one before every like it ha didn't happen I think or the, the last one that's just happened a few months after or something yeah a few months after sit there watch TV BBC introducing Arlo Parks yeah, got it. it feels and and it and it, it and no, and it's not the no. And for you viewers, it's not the best feeling. It doesn't feel. You feel like ah, oh, I've done that audition. Like you know, that could be me. You know what I mean? It could have been me. <clears throat> yes, it could have been you. But the probably 
you, one thing you've got to remember in your mind, and, and, and this is one thing that we will like, probably talk about, the one thing you've got to bear in mind is that just because you didn't get it doesn't mean you're not good. And just because you yeah. get it doesn't mean that you're never going to get anything. It just probably wasn't your right time, and it probably wasn't the gig for you. Yeah, and, and maybe I just they add something on. Go that? on, bro. Yeah, of course, but, of course, you can. Literally, literally, I was just thinking the same thing. Like when you when you get that email and they say we're not, you know, you're not what we're looking for. Mm. Um, you will then start to in your mind, you'll start to gauge your talent on that. Agreed. But Agreed. What you need to gauge your talent on is the fact you're in the room in the first place. So Agreed. for for those seven drummers or eight drummers on exactly. Jack's one, they yeah. were all worthy of the job because they go. were at the audition. So so um, that's, that's a, just again, always remind yourself of that. Of course, of course, definitely a thing that you got to bear in mind, you know. But just I always say to myself, just because you don't get it doesn't mean that you're never going to get anything, you know. Like at, like Roman said, literally a couple of minutes ago, if you got to take all the auditions that go your way even if it's maybe something that you're not quite interested in. I know it sounds horrible, but if it's something you're not interested in because you know that you can't do it, then that's understandable. Yeah, that's a different thing. But you need to put, it, as a session player, as a person who wants to work in the industry for a various amount of you know, genres and stuff, like, you have to be broad. So you have to take on things that you might not, okay, just say, for example, one quick example, you don't you're not a jazz fan okay you're not a jazz yeah. fan but you listen to rock and you listen to pop mainstream you listen to all that stuff yeah yeah but if you want to be versatile there is work in the jazz community or the, the jazz music side of the industry right Absolutely. it's not all in the mainstream right so if you can't get anything in mainstream there's other avenues there's other genres of music that people are looking for players do you know what I mean? Yeah. But you yeah. need a, one thing. You need to be experienced in playing that style of music before you even think about taking on a genre such as that. You know what I mean? So having that broad range of like being able to play different styles will allow you to, to, to consider work and auditions in other styles and genres rather than just confining yourself to just one genre and being like, I didn't get that job, but I'll go for another one. Didn't get that one, so I'll go for another one all in the same area you need to you know there's work everywhere you know so that's why we when roman says there's auditions to be done and your phone loads at you take them all because the right one will be in that that kind of pile for you, do you know exactly what I mean? or the right exactly. two or the right three or the right four you don't know you could be really lucky and get loads of them but there could just be that one killer gig that you just don't know about but you'll turn up and boom you got it there you go they saw you yeah. walk through the door and that's it. That's the guy. That's the guy I'm looking for. You're laughing. You're laughing. Do you know what I mean? Because yeah. after that. And, and just to just to define that point, like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course. There, there, there's a huge, for me, and I agree with Jack, there's a huge difference between like take, taking an audition that isn't your personal preference, mm, yeah. but you know you can do it justice and you can earn yourself some money because at the end of that the fact. day, it's a job and you can earn yourself some money. But that if fact. you're if you're taking an audition say for a metal band and mm. you're just not a very good metal drummer or mm. bass player. Yeah. It's kind of a bit selfish, like for me. Of like so I think what Jack's saying is just sort of be self aware and just know like Yeah. Can, just can know I do can I do the job? Yeah. No you the job. The word I was looking for, which wasn't wasn't quite coming to my head, was yeah. no oh no, I forgot it again. <laughs> Oh no. <laughs> no! Oh, I'm on my train of thought and I've forgotten it. Oh no. Oh, um, oh that's it. That's it. Time. I got it. I got it. I finally got it back in my head. The it. word I was looking for was to know your abilities. Yeah. Know what your abilities are. Know a hundred percent what you can do and what you can't do. Know yeah. what you're about. As and a yeah, and the areas that you don't know or are not too aware of or fond of, learn them. Spend more time learning them than you do learning the stuff you know, because the stuff you know is it's there, it's there, it's at the forefront of your mind. You know it, but the stuff you don't know, you need to know in order to progress to that those sort of things that could bring you a lot of work. You know what I mean? It could be one area yeah. you don't know about, and and that's that job just gone down the drain because you turned up and you thought you knew what you were doing, but you don't, and and you've met now you've you've not got the job and you've walked away and you've gone ah. Oh, 
I, 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 what did I do wrong? You know, and no offense, not, I don't know why I'm saying no offense, <laughs> but you know what I mean? Um, <laughs> yeah. But in a way it kind of is because some people can, t- some people might take offense to not being denied a job. You know, some people might take yeah. that. Oh, why? Because I'm not good enough. But, but yeah. it's not that. A lot of people will. It's not that. It's because they're looking for something particular, you know? And if you don't, if you don't bring it and you don't bring what they're looking for, you're not, you're not what they're looking for. So you're not going to yeah. get chosen. Do you know what I mean? So you really like anything gotta, in life. Um, sorry, Jack. No, it's it, cool, it's, man. It's like, you know, they say about an interview, like within the first 10 seconds, they made their mind up. Like sometimes yeah. it's just the way you walk or the shoes you're wearing. Like yeah. all, all the players that they audition that day are going to be good players. So yeah. it, it just comes that they might just think that guy seemed nice. Or but I'm not going to lie to you. Right you look, could have, you, you know. could have, you could have a guy turn up. You could have a, you could have a jazz <clears> audition. Just say, yeah, on that topic we were on about. You could have a jazz audition. There's a jazz audition coming up, right? You got a guy walk in. Suited and booted, looking in the top dollar, looking like he should be at a jazz gig. Yeah. Knocking it out of the park, walking out, and going, lovely job, Lee. I've done that. But as Got he's walking one. out, yeah, he sees a guy in shorts and a t-shirt and running trainers who's waiting yeah. to go in an audition, right? And that guy looks at him and goes, nah, he ain't got it. He looks like a metal drummer. I mean, it looks like he's just come after doing a two-hour double pedal session. Right, <laughs> he's just judging a bit more. Yeah, ju- you're judging a bit more because that guy could go in there, smash that audition out of the park in sh- in shorts and a t-shirt, and be the jazz drummer. And the guy that thought he was the best jazz drummer isn't didn't get the job. Yeah, I mean, and, it's and not about no your ability. No, it's not about your abilities all the time. Sometimes it is about how you present yourself, you know, and ha- as a person, not what you wear. Doesn't matter what you wear. I could wear anything to an audition. You know what I mean? Yeah. Sometimes I feel like going naked because I feel like they would choose me more. But you know, <laughs> you just you just never know. Do you know what I mean? But you know, oh, it doesn't matter what you wear. It's literally just a case of like, can you bring what they're looking for? You know what I mean? And it's not yeah, because we- I'm I'm the part I look the part. It's definitely can you bring what they're looking for? Do you have the right personality to go with it? And that's it. That's literally it. The, the, the ability and the personality is what people are looking for nowadays. Yeah. It's not, and, and it, I'm the top you, dollar, you know? I, I'm sure I've, I've never auditioned anyone, so I don't know. But I'm sure mm. if you ask these people that are auditioning, like, write on a piece of paper what you want, they probably mm. wouldn't be able to write it. You know, they, they're just, it's just emotional intelligence. They're just being like, he's done a good job. Yeah. I like him. Yeah. yeah. There's no rhyme or reason. There no, really and there's isn't. not. So don't, like you say, don't beat yourself up. No, and like you say, there's not always something that they're looking for. Like it's not written down. That's what we're looking for. It's they'll know when they know. You'll walk yeah, in the exactly. door. Like I said, you could walk in that door in shorts, running trainers, and a t-shirt, and it doesn't matter what you're wearing. They'll go, "This looks like the guy." Yeah. Well, I've had, then I've when had they had see you play, they'll go, Whew, "This is the guy." Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And that guy beforehand will be walking out of there thinking, oh, yeah, I've done it. Smash out of the park. I was, I, was in, I was wearing all the clothing, you know, I look like proper jazz. No, yeah. you don't get the job because you didn't bring what they were looking for, you know? Or maybe you did, but maybe not what <clears throat> they didn't see. So they didn't get a connection musically. Yeah. But they saw exactly. you, another guy walk in, and they were like, straight away, found him. I mean, yeah. you just I, don't I've had know. it before. I've, I've turned up like I've, I've turned up looking like the coolest fucking motherfucker in the room, right? <laughs> <laughs> no, just, and just be, just just feeling fresh. Like walked in there, like met the yeah. guy and been like, oh yeah, we're vibing. Like this is going well. <laughs> played it. He knows. Like, and the, everyone in the room's like smiling, and in my yeah, mind, yeah, I've yeah. got it. Like mm. no joke. No, no, and no I would, yeah. I've done this loads of times, being like cocky about it, and yeah, yeah, you know, it comes to it, and sometimes you don't even hear from them. <laughs> And no, you don't ask. Ask. I was going to say that earlier. Actually, sometimes you won't get, you won't get any. Like I've had ones where you get told whether you got it or you don't, and you get feedback of what you need to improve on, which is quite yeah. actually quite helpful because it brings you on to the next one you get. Knowing that you want, exactly, it's a great thing to have constructive criticism because it makes you push further and makes you push harder in what you need to work on. But sometimes you don't get told at all. You don't get no no feedback, and you don't even get told whether you got it or not. You just, yeah. you don't even get an email to say, sorry, you didn't get it this time. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And it's again, listen, just... some, sometimes there's no feedback, you know, nah. that nah. it's not that you've done a, you know, there's nothing Yeah, wrong. yeah, yeah, no, nah, it's not because you're it bad. It goes back to that. 
Yeah. Every time just goes back to any time you do an audition and you, you don't, if you don't get it in that, in that respect, if you don't get the audition does not mean that you're not good at what you do and you didn't bring 110. It's just not your time, not your gig or not what they're looking for in that current moment in time. And that's fair enough. You know, we win, we lose. You know what I mean? That's just how it goes, exactly. you know? So exactly. yeah, to put it in a nutshell, that's, that's basically what you've got to look out for. You not know your abilities. You've got to know, like have a good mindset, have experience first. Like you said, put yourself out there for all auditions. But you fundamentally, in order to do that, you need to have those two things. You need to have the abilities and you need to have the mindset. Do you know what I mean? That you can, you know, do the things you put yourself forward for. Because if you don't, you, Absolutely. You, you need to go and get that first before you bring it. You know what I mean? That's all. That's all, That's my personal opinion. And then people, everyone that's listening, and some people might think different. Other musicians might think differently. But my opinion is your abilities, and you know, even you put down sometimes down to your personality as well. You know, you can't yeah. go. The likability is yeah. a huge factor because if yeah. they, if you're going on tour with someone for eight months, they mm. need to be able to get on with you. Yeah, like, definitely. You, you can't you be need a, to be able to get on with them. Excuse, excuse me again. Excuse what I'm saying, but you can't be cocky. I mean, can't just walk in there thinking like, mate, I've got this nailed. <clears throat> Do you know what I mean? I have th- revised this song for the last two weeks. I know what I'm doing. I'm the dog's bollocks. They're going to give me the job. Yeah. You However, I mean? I mean, you may do- disagree. And I know I just said what I was saying about my experiences. Like, I'm only confident in my head. You mm. know, I'm not going in there cocky. Mm. But I think there, I think you may disagree, but I think it's important to be confident. I think there is a slight bit of ego if you're a musician. You need a bit of an ego, I think. You need, you need, to, you need confidence. It's not. Yeah. For me, it's not arrogance. It's not. No. But it's not arrogant yeah. to be confident in what you're doing. No, it's, you can be confident. For me, confidence and ego is two different things. That's my personal opinion. Confidence, ego, two totally different things. Right. They both contain confidence. But there's confidence in terms of. You've got the right mindset. I can do this. I put myself forward because I know I have the abilities to do so. But if I don't if I don't get it, I don't get it. All right. But there's confidence in yourself that you put all that effort in to put yourself forward to, to show that you've got it, what it takes. OK, then there's ego. Right. There's ego with confidence. The confidence is I know I can do it. That's the confidence. But the ego side of it is I don't give a shit about the rest of you. Do you know what I mean? Or I don't give a shit what you have to say. Do you know what I mean? I don't care about your constructive feedback because I know I'm good at what I do. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And if I don't get the job, I'm still going to walk out of there thinking I'm a dog's bollocks because that's 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 what they're going to do. Do you know what I mean? That's just how it goes. So there's, that for me is two different things. Me, personally, myself, I'm more on, I, and I'm sure Roman's the same because I know he is, we're all confidence. We're on the confidence level. Yeah. We've met, we've met, we've met egotistical people. You know, everyone has across their experiences. We've met ego, egotistical people, and um, you can notice the dip, You can notice the imbalance in it straight away when working together. You know, you can know notice that imbalance. You know, it's just the case of like really knowing to kind of walk. I say myself, walk away from things like that. Walk away from any ego people. You know what I mean? It yeah, might get them. It might get them somewhere. It might get them somewhere. Yeah, and it will get. It might get them somewhere. It might not get them somewhere. But if it, you don't want to be associated with people like that, because it can have a bit of a. I feel like, and you might agree, Roman. You might not. And if you, if you, anyone has an opinion on this, or any viewers listening or anything, have a view on this, then please message <laughs> and we'll talk about it or something like that. You know, we're we're always down for a good chat, but. I think they'll have a detrimental effect on your career if you yeah. do too much with ego people, because you're, in my opinion, you're setting yourself up to fail. Oh, I couldn't agree more. That's my opinion. You're setting yourself up to fail. You can be confident in yourself that you can do a good job. Then you need to walk away and you need to put that confidence into working with people that had the same mindset, the same characteristics and the same outlook on the project or the music that you were creating right but when it comes to ego it's not going to look good on you if say your guitarist thinks he's bloody next fucking slash 
yeah, and you're just free average other bass player, drummer, and singer, just free average people, and you've got this knobhead standing on the side of the stage thinking he's like the next big thing. Let him do it. Let him do it. But for you, that looks bad on the rest of you having someone like that. Right? Yeah, and having it's, someone it's all... like that is is very very detrimental. So just bear that in mind. You know, don't always, you know, really kind of take a step back when you start to see that thing come out. You know what I mean? Because it can Absolutely. have an effect on your what you do. But yeah, as you were saying, Ronald. yeah. And and what I would say, sort of adding to that, and I'm sure I'm sure you agree. But in my in my experience with these kind of ego driven people mm. um it's all about them there's a lot of selfish behavior that comes with that and if you're on Definitely. a project if me and jack are on a project with a guitarist singer for example three of us mm. and that person's got a huge ego mm. and we're just there being confident um yeah you know they're not benefiting us and whether mm. you like it or not the music industry is run on relationships and benefiting each yeah, other of course so it is. Uh, and i it's an unwritten thing, but when you're on a project, like mm. you, you want to get work and you want to, you know, yeah. you you are, you are using those people to an extent. And I don't mean yeah. that in a bad way, but you're, you're using each other. And if there's, if there's someone in, in the pot, that's got a big ego, like they're going to, they're, they're going to bring no value to you. Like, no, it's, they're not. It's, it's just, it's just, uh... and I'm not talking about take, take, take. It's not take, take, take. Mm-hmm. You're giving. Mm. But you, it's give and take. You, yeah, yeah. You have to have a bit of give and you have to have a bit of take. Do you know what I mean? But that's when I say, when I use the word quite a lot of musicianship, do you know what I mean? Which is a thing that I spoke about in episode three that I studied. I studied yeah, yeah. musicianship of drumming, but I also studied the musicianship of mu- the creative industry as a whole. So yeah. the whole working with people that benefit you is, is key because, you know, the you, you all have the same understanding. But you will work well together, which creates good music, creates a good vibe, creates a good stage presence, and creates a lot of different things like that. But as soon as you bring something like someone minor into it that doesn't have the same outlook, mindset, and it's all about it's me, 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 that's it, that, it, that musicianship gets lost because it's you're, you're giving yourself your time, your effort, to make them look good. You're not benefiting it from yourself. Yeah, okay, you might get some shows. Cool. Yeah, yeah, all right. You might do a little bit of like traveling, might see some places. Cool. But the problem is, is it's not going to benefit you if you don't get appreciated for what you do on a personal level and on a mus- musicianship level. It's, it's, it's just, just, it's just, it works both ways. It doesn't just work one way. Does that make sense? Like you've got, uh, it makes perfect sense. Effort comes from all areas. It doesn't just come from one person and the rest don't have to give two craps. I mean, it's just how it goes, you know? So really, really bear that in mind when you're working with upcoming, even bear that in mind when you're working with people that are up there, like big people, big yeah. people. You're not always going to walk into somebody, you know, I'm just going to give you an example really quickly. You could be drumming for, I don't know, say Beyonce. Just say you're the dr- or you're the bass player or you're the drummer for Beyonce or the guitarist, I don't, whatever. You're something to do with her. Okay. And you've known her music for all this time. And you're like, oh, my God, I just got a gig with Beyonce. This is going to be so cool. She's going to be so nice. Like, literally, we're going to get on so well. Like, she's going to be, we're going to be a pals by the end of it. Like, I'm going to have, I'm like, going to share half her bank account. We're going to go shopping together. Do you know what I mean? That is chilling literally with Jay-Z. Like, exactly, yeah, chilling yeah. with Jay-Z, you know? <laughs> but the problem is, is you could walk in to an audition for her or walk into the first rehearsal with her, being given that opportunity or that job. And she could be the diva. Dog. Big Steve and the most horrible person in the world to you because you don't do one thing that she wants. Yeah. Yeah. Now, don't get me wrong. You, as the musician, are then going to try and prove to her that you have what it takes. But you shouldn't push yourself so far that you lose the love for what you, you're doing and the creativeness behind what you do. No, because it will spoil your mind. And it will spoil your experience. 
You should make the experience fun and exciting, but also very hardworking for yourself, but to benefit someone who's going to benefit you as well. Don't just be benefiting them all the time. Do you know what I mean? And I'm no. sure 100% that Beyonce is very, very, very lovely. And if she's listening to this or she ever sees this, I do love you and I would like to be your drummer. Just say. But, <laughs> but what I'm trying to say... Blaze. Yeah. But what I, I'm going to watch the flame blaze, please. But what I'm trying <laughs> to say is, you know, you just never know what you're walking into and you've got to find the right thing that's right for you. So, Absolutely. you know... You know, Jesus, I feel like I'm reading a bedtime story of like great advice. No, I like it. I like it. Yeah, I I think that's fundamental. Fundamental. I've got a point. I want to touch on something. Go on. It was something you said and it triggered and I've been thinking about it. Yeah, go on. Jump on it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, The unless you know, unless you're the E Street band playing for Bruce Springsteen, (laughs) like they have for fucking (laughs) fifty years or something. No, seriously. Sessions or projects, they're stepping stones. So. Mm. If you're on a project, you know, it's a stepping stone. And Definitely. when I was saying about the people in the room, mm. well, I was saying using, but it's not the right word, but you, you're benefiting each other. And that's how that's how you step into another area Def- because Def- that guitarist says, oh, jump on this project with me. Mm. So the way you need to look at it is it's it's increments. It's like you're, you're always going to be evolving. Def- so Def- just look after your network cool be a good big person time. big time be a good always person. share always try and share your experiences is one thing as well one quick thing always if you get an opportunity given and they're also looking for some someone else that you personally might know like just say i get offered a job and they're looking for a bass player well my first point of call is roman you know thank you because, yeah, likewise. because do the same. You know not only do i respect him not only do i get on with him but at the same time, I know his musicianship mindset is similar to mine. So working creatively on a project would help. But at the same time, I think what we can bring together, not only individually, will benefit whoever's asking to bring on board. And if they see that, it's going to make them feel 100% better about what they're doing. I mean, it might not always be. I might. Okay. It could be the opposite way. Roman could get a gig. He might find out they need a drummer. He will put might put it my way. But the problem is is they might not want me and I'm not going to take that to heart and that's fine. But the thing about the musicianship side of it is the fact that Roman's taken the time to ask someone like myself or whoever to join him on a job, you know, yeah. and that's taking care of the, the community and the network that you've built. You know what I mean? And I believe that everybody should do that. There should always be an implement of helping each other, you know, they should and, because otherwise it would just, it would stagnate, you know, no, no one did that. No, it exactly. A bizarre industry. And that's the thing, having like the guests on, such as Nick, um, you know, he's helped us out by coming on and chatting to us and, 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 and answering our questions that we had, not only for a personal benefit, benefit sorry, but for your own you know, viewers sort of discretion, like listening and listening to what he has to say and what he's been up to and stuff like that. It, it, it's, it's beneficial, but for us being it beneficial, we've, we've got the chance to have a guest such as himself to talk about what we're talking about all the time in these group sessions so it's kind of it's it's not that again he's bringing something to the network he's now made a new network of people yeah that he he's can talk into to, another area you know? he's moved into another area you know he's all and the his, way over his there perspective his perspective is a million miles away from jack's and mine you know Big. everyone is different because so- there's more like we were saying on earlier, there's more experience as he spoke about. He's had more experience. Like we asked him loads about his experience. He's had more experience. He's built that portfolio. So the mindset is there. So he's given back to people that are on that, the same journey that he's taken. Does that make he sense? He runs lower down exactly. the ladder. And that's all it is. It's just about giving, giving that, you know, sort of boost of morale to show people that like, this is what you, you, you need to know in order to, when you get to here, you'll understand a bit more. You know, it's yeah, it's just yeah, really yeah. good. It's it's really fundamental, which and, is why we want to at the talk end of the day. This. End of the day, whether you're me or Jack mm. or Nick, yeah, or Pino Palladino, yeah, they, or Steve Jordan, they, yeah, or Freddie Mercury. They, they've they've all been, you know, sorry, they've all sorry, been sorry, in... sorry, and Beyonce. I left them out. <laughs> sorry, sorry. <laughs> no, but they they've they've all been playing in the pubs. 
Yeah. You know, they've all, they've been at the bottom. They so all they started know, somewhere. Like... They all started somewhere. Everyone starts somewhere. And we all got to start, as they say in that song, started from the bottom, now we're here. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. We so started cool. We started from the bottom. We're working our way up that ladder. Do you know what I mean? We're only so much of a distance behind people who are, 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 are up there, you know? And... But we're all on this. Like I've always said to people, we're all we're all on the same boat. We're all on the same journey together. As people, like, yeah. As people, the musical experiences you know, are varied. Not to, not to pray, not to praise here or anything like that, or say you know. But you know, it's like we're it's like we're all on Noah's Ark. Do you know what I mean, we're all the animals, and then there's yeah. one. There's one. The one thing up there is Noah is the music. Okay, so we're all on the same boat together, going to the same the same place to get together. But we're all on different levels. Of the boat, you know what I mean. So we're all working up that ladder to get to the top. You know what that's I mean. Good way looking at it. And that's how I look at things. That's you how really I are it. reading a story now, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> no, but that's that's how I've always had that mindset. That's my mindset. That's how. I, that's how. That's why I'm. I feel like I'm quite a creative person, and and you know, music is small yeah, fish. music is my life. So you know, it is like a progression up a ladder. But we're not. No one's better than you. No one's better than me. No one's better than Roman. There are people who have more experience and more credits. which get and which credits which gets them more further, but it does not necessarily mean that they are better than you or myself or Roman. You know, it's just the experience they've gained that makes it look like they're better. That's all it is, and that's I can really find I can blue I could write that down a blueprint on the bottom of a form for you to fill out. It literally stating, you, no one is better than you. <laughs> Tick yeah. the box, please. Do you know what I mean? And, no and one add, is add into that. Add into that. It's a perfect segue. Like their network is stronger. Mm. Like mm, the, you, if you're a player at that level, you know other players at that level. Your yeah. network, and you know everyone below. So mm. if you're here, you know all the people below. But if you're yeah. up here, you know everyone. Exactly. So the high, that's a good way of looking at it. Like the higher you get, the further mm. you get into your journey the more people and, you're going to know. And, and one thing quickly, vast. one thing quickly, just you're up here, they're saying about the people up here and then everyone down here. Those people that are up there, they're not necessarily going to see you. They're not no. going to see who you are. They don't know you. They don't know you personally. They're up there. They've got their experience. You're down here. You've got your experience. But there's that, there is that, I'm going to put a good little, this isn't facts, I'm just saying off the top of my head here, but I'm going to go with that good 5% of people that if you put the effort in and you put the time, you put the work in the dedication to your craft along that way of your own journey, a door will open and they'll see you. Yeah. And that is where that door opens for them to go. I saw this guy. Then you get looked at. Do I mean, and that's how social media comes into play. Those big people on social media, those big, big, influencers the people big booth musicians that have got you know thousands of streams you might not you might tag them in something that you do in appreciation to what they've done and they don't see it and they don't reshare you you don't like it they don't do good and that's fine i've done that fair few times i'm sure roman has too but that's not to say that no and you wouldn't but there's not to say that there's that five percent chance out of a hundred that some point further down the line they're gonna see see it and sometimes they'll see it, but you just won't know about it. Does that make sense? Like you might, they might see it a different way. They could be aware. Yeah, they could be aware of you, but they're not going to make it out like they're aware of you. Does that mean, you know, a lot of people they're do that. Watching. You know, they're watching from afar, you know, and a lot of people do that nowadays, I must admit. But it's good. It's good. It's a good thing. It's, I mean, it's just, if you're keeping yourself on that radar, keeping yourself in the network, the big, big arc, as I call it, Somewhere yeah. along though that ladder, you'll you'll get seen by people that could fundamental have a fundamental effect on your career. That's all. That's yeah. all I got to say. But yeah, love it, love it. I've got one more thing, Jack. Go on, go um, on. One more thing. So go I on. talked about the um the guys with the keys, you know, the people that open the doors. Um, mm. Oh yeah, good. Right. Yeah, ma- yeah, yeah, yeah. Managers, fixers, agents, mm. Mm. all these, all these guys. And you might be asking yourself, yeah, but how do I, how do I contact them? You know, how do I? Oh, yeah, it's good. Like, yeah, it's all right saying, oh, there's that guy up in that ivory tower in London, but how do <laughs> I get? Um, and I've got a few hacks because it, they're things that like I've done and people I know have done, and mm. um, it might help you. And 
I'm just going to quickly drop them in before we end this episode. Yeah, go on. So the, the first one is a lot of these top musicians, session musicians, mm. a lot of them do masterclasses, okay? So, yeah, listen, they, um, you know, they do a masterclass in London for yeah. 10 people, and you might have to pay £100 to attend. I've you done know, that. There will be, yeah, Jack's done it. There you go. Mm. But if... You know, you're doing that and you're going to get value from it for what it is. But if you can make an impression on that person mm. and speak to them after or they see you play, mm. um, can I stay in touch with you? Or can I send you an email in six months to, to ask you a question? Or yeah, and if you just engage with them, yeah, yeah, a, yeah, yeah. this is a little bit of a hack, but it can, it can work. Um, and you've got to bring them value. But that's a good way to quickly get on someone's radar. Yeah, definitely. And it could be four years down the line, mm. once you've put the hard work in, that that person says, oh, I remember that guy, or I'll recommend him. So that's a good, quite, good, point. That's a, that, good point. It's a very, it's a good thing to consider. And the other one is, I said about producers, engineers, all these guys, they work yeah. with a lot of people. Definitely. Um, DM them, ring them up, mm -hmm. you know, go in there, say, can I make the tea? I make the tea on Saturdays, That's for right. example. Yeah, sounds man. stupid. For sounds free. Stupid. Sometimes you got to take, you got to bite the bullet and do it for free. Yeah. I mean, for get, the experience. Your, get yourself in there. Get yourself in that environment. Yeah. And trust me, like it, it will happen. You, you'll be in there one day. You'll get talking to someone. Oh, I'm a drummer. And they'll yeah. be like, oh, you, you don't. You, you, you just don't. Guy. Yeah. Oh, you just don't know who's going to walk through that door. That's the best yeah. one. That's the best but, way to say. Yeah. But you need to be in the right place. And it sounds, oh, yeah. it, <laughs> people have probably heard this a million times, but just put yourself in the right environment mm. and give people value. Like, yeah. go and make the tea or, or say to them, like, as a drummer, Jack, you, yeah. could, you could go in and say, um, when, when you get your next uh, delivery of new microphones, can I, mm. I'll come up and play the drums for you while you test them out. Yeah. You know, engine, this is a real thing. You know, yeah, engineers yeah, yeah. will they need someone to just play a kit for four hours straight while they test their equipment. Yeah. And see what they can do with it. Basically. Yeah. It's just experience. Yeah. No, not only is that a key thing to do, but it's experience. So yeah, it gets it's you experience again, as well. Name on the but radar. More, but more importantly, that person is, is above you in terms of experience and network. Mm. They're the facts mm. and what you're doing, you're giving them value. Mm. It's not take, take, take you're giving 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 yeah and then down the line hopefully they give back to you yeah definitely um, and I, I hope that's kind of made sense but yeah definitely it's um i think that's a good word for it is environment put yourself in mm. the right environment yeah definitely if you're in a local pub great because mm. it's all part of your craft but it's probably mm. not the right environment try your best hey, to be in the right place at the right time <laughs> yeah, yeah. and it. people say you know like I don't believe in luck. Mm. I believe in in kind of forcing yeah, yeah, something yeah, yeah, yeah. to happen. And I, know, I think yeah. a good way to do that is put yourself in a studio, put yourself in a masterclass. Definitely. Um, there's loads of other examples. I can't think of them off the top of my head, but yeah, get get yourself in the environment. Yeah, definitely. The right definitely. environment. Right. We have <laughs> we have a big. Well, I say big. It's it's a, it's a pretty good announcement we're gonna make. Um, we're yeah, gonna round awesome. we're gonna round it off there, but uh, we just wanted to let you know that you, if you haven't already, please go check out the last episode fifteen, I think, of the Groove Sessions. Um, we've got a couple more coming just before Christmas, which would be really cool if you can check them out. Um, but the big announcement we've got to make is stay tuned for episode six of the podcast because we have got the really talented, really really nice, you know done so much in the industry and wow. uh yes really sound guy his name is adam breeze and he is the drummer for a band called raven eye and we're going to be speaking to him as our special guest in episode six it's gonna be really fun it's gonna be like talking loads about drums and questions about his mindset everything like that and it's gonna be a quick fire round questions it's gonna be really really cool and yeah it's just gonna be really fun so that's gotta stay tuned for that that's gonna be in episode six and yeah. yeah, that's that's the big announcement. Buzzing. So, so excited. Yeah, it's gonna be really, really good. So um we're gonna round it off there. We hope you guys have had a great time listening to this episode and you 
taken something away from it you know even if it's just us ranting for 50 minutes or whatever it's going on or you yeah. or we've taken 30 minutes of your train journey to work up or something like that i don't know but we just want we hope it's like you know worth it what we're talking about and it's really like you know you're walking away with something new you didn't know or something that's really fundamental to your career or you know your first steps into this industry um and yeah just just you know show the love and support keep liking the videos keep coming and listening to us two dimwits talk about crap for 50 minutes or whatever you want to talk about you know what I mean? <laughs> but definitely <laughs> come check us yeah. out a bit more uh show us your love um we're, our podcasts are now available, I must say, on Spotify, as well as the podcast app Anchor. If you don't always have access to YouTube, it's really cool. You can download it on your phone. You can check us out when we've got new episodes going up all the time. Yeah, Set us as your favorite and you'll get updates when they come up. But yeah, it's been really fun talking to you guys. I think uh, I've got a lot out of this myself even though I'm the one chatting and I'm sure Roman has too. So have I, I've, I've really enjoyed this one. I, yeah. hope I've, I hope I've made sense. I'm not, yeah. a, you know, I'm not a talented speaker, but yeah, I've got yeah, a yeah. few different insights. No, nah, I think you did. I think I've you brought, made some great um, points. Great points. Brought some value to, to everyone. Defo, defo. Hopefully. But I've been Jack. I've been Roman. And this has been episode five of the Groove Sessions podcast. And we'll catch you later in episode six with our special guest, Adam Breeze. Look after yourself. Look after yourself. Take care. Keep on grooving. Bye-bye.